tokenization is a bigger narrative than AI. 100% bigger narrative than AI. And the tokenization path includes players like BlackRock, players like Circle, players like Swift Blockchain, and we're going to tie it all together today. Okay? Be sure to tune in. Um, and as always, cue my guy, Indigo Saint. Let's get it. Let's get it. Indigo Saint in the building. Black Blue Investing. Let's go. Misbeliever was black who invested With your money you ain't gotta be guessing Profits is what we manifested So we binge on a black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested Got course in this race we invested We got stocks we got crypto with a blessing So thank God for that black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested What's up, what's up guys? Hello crypto warriors, what is up black Rue crew? We're gonna get into it today tokenization okay um it's kind of what i promised you guys last week or not last week but uh saturday um we were talking about metapath and uh, at the end of the show on saturday be sure to check that one out or wednesday excuse me be sure to check that one out someone asked the question okay how does metapath fit into this whole swift uh thing okay um and i was like okay we'll we'll break it down we'll distill it um we'll distill it uh on saturday okay so let's do that um and boy 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 the information i found <laughs> um very 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 juicy information um blackrock circle uh shima capital everything of course we're gonna use uh some re some uh, research from our guy uh underdog research channel shook focus we all worked on this together so shout out to those brothers shout out to the third eye as well um definitely check out his channel indigo saint he does the entry music um very shout out very much shout out to uh indigo saint and we collaborated with indigo saint the third eye channel and we did um a collaboration talking about some of this information and indigo gave us an entirely new perspective on it from uh, his experience in, in Zimbabwe and like how um, that's impactful for his people and not only his people, but just all of us, right? So definitely go check out the Third Eye if uh, one of my moderators can uh, drop the Third Eye channel in the chat so people can go like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. Uh, what is up? Let's see who's in the chat over here. What is up, E? Um, shout out to E. He's a Telegram moderator. Um, if you guys cannot afford the Patreon, go ahead, go over to Telegram. It's completely free as of right now. Um, but, you know, if you want to step up from that, um, go to the Patreon. It's um, completely, um, it's less than a cup of coffee for a weekly watch list. And I think after this weekend, I will raise the prices on that. Okay. Um, so let's see who's in the chat here. What's up, E? What's up, uh, BK Crypto? What's up, Riviera Group? What's up, uh, Min Min Suk O? Okay. Um, what's up, Kid Grabo? What's up, G? Appreciate you. What's up, uh, Drake L. Owens? Uh, <laughs> this dip made my stomach hurt for real. <clears throat> I feel you. I feel you. I feel you on that one. Um, Hold on one second, guys. Yeah, dip was impactful for people, but honestly, just more time to scoop it up, scoop it up. Um, just like we went over yesterday, right? I, someone suggested, um, I'm just going to refer to Wednesday as so many things other than Wednesday, okay? <laughs> it's going to be yesterday. It's going to be last week. But uh um, like someone went over, um, they used Harmony One as a good example to where Swift can go, right? Um, Harmony One went from sub penny all the way to like 37 cents last bull run. So imagine then if you have 3 million Swift coins, you are now a millionaire, right? 
um, at like 33 cents, right? So uh, that's something to look at, right? And it really looks like the uh, crypto market is ready to take that next step up, okay? And I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. Having is coming. I think everyone's going to think, oh, the having is coming. So I got like a, a, a you know, another month until uh, everything pops off. And honestly, I think having is going to come like the week, a week later. Boom. Honestly, that's that's my my thought. Not financial advice. That's just what I'm I'm thinking for, for my portfolio. Um, let's see here. But yeah, we'll get to all these uh, comments. Uh, what is up, Mystery Arcade Occult Multiversity? Peace, brother. Um, definitely check out my guy, Konami Codes. Um, again, if somebody can drop his Patreon in the chat, I would appreciate it. Um, yeah, definitely check him out on The Ronin Experience, one of my favorite shows to watch. Um, they mix the esoteric, the crypto, and all that into one package. Got a lot of favorite shows around here. The Ronin Experience, uh, Maximus Crypto, Underdog Research Channel, um, Shook Focus Channel, uh, Simon Family Investments. Uh, we got a lot of favorite shows, a lot of good alpha on all of these shows. Definitely check them all out, guys. But let's get into this. Let me share the screen here. Uh, we're going to listen to a couple different videos and, of course, fair use on those videos. And definitely, you can go check out the whole versions of all the videos we're going to listen to. Um, so let's go over here to our mind map. Okay. Let me make sure everyone can see it. Okay. So I think the best way to start this, and this is going to be like a three pronged talk today. Okay. But understand everything is going to be in the purview of tokenization, okay? And this builds on everything we've been talking about, about Tim Draper, okay? If you don't remember, Tim Draper and uh, Draper Dragons are the guys who are behind Swift, okay? I've shown you guys many times over there how, how they relate. Um, check out some of the past videos if you don't know how they were relating. I'm just going to kind of go in like you already know. And we're just going to pick up and start with the first prong of the talk today, which will be BlackRock. Okay. So let's go ahead and listen to Larry Fink as he says something here. Okay. We're going to cut. And this is on the Paul Barron Network. Shout out to the Paul Barron Network. Again, this is fair use. Um, definitely go check out the whole episode. BlackRock CEO hints at DeFi. And a bull run, full break, breakdown. Um, let's make this. Let me make sure my volume is up here. It is. And we'll make this full screen. Now, the key here is, is what is causing this? Uh, now, what are we seeing this in terms of the market disarray, the pushback, the consumer spending that's been holding inflation high? They get into it a little bit here around wages being too high. Listen it. Uh, the whole idea about restricting immigration. And in the United States, we've had close to a trillion dollars of fiscal stimulus just beginning its J curve. These are restricting immigration. It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty funny that he's saying that, that uh, not enough immigrants. And this is, this interview is from like about six or seven months ago. So this is before everything popped off with Venezuela, where their money failed. And then all these immigrants ended up rushing into America and other places. Most of those immigrants are Venezuelan because their money failed. But that's a whole entirely different topic. But it's interesting that um, he's saying that there's not enough immigrants here. So, And it looks like somebody kind of cut that video up. But anyway, it's interesting that he said that. That's just, just an aside. We're going to keep going here. Huge job creators. And at the same time, we have restricted uh, immigration. And as a result of it, you know, we see more wage pressure. So at what cost? We have in the United States a very protracted. Uh... So it sounds like he's using a lot of little fancy words and whatever here. But it sounds like here he's saying there's not enough immigration and we kind of need that for the economy. 
So it's very interesting what popped off with, um, you know, with uh, Venezuela. Moving on and what and what we're currently dealing with here in the United States. But uh, that's an aside. We're just going to keep going here. <laughs> uh, strike between the auto workers and the auto companies. It has been reported that the, the union is asking for a 40 percent increase. So at what cost? What do you do with a problem like right this? Right now, I think in our megatrend said right now we are we, we are under invested in China. Under invested in China. That's interesting. Okay, so <laughs> Paul didn't even touch it. He didn't even want to touch it. Under invested in China. That's interesting. <laughs> um, but again, key under invested in China. What did we check out on Wednesday? Definitely go back and check the show Wednesday. I can't even remember the title of the show, but go back and check the show Wednesday, okay? If anyone, if any of the mods can put the show in from Wednesday into the channel, into the um, into the comments, I'd appreciate it. Um, remember, Tim Draper, from his own words, we checked out an interview with Tim Draper. He said, one of my biggest advantages was investing in China. That was that was one of the biggest advantage, advantages of his portfolio. So he's still investing there through the Draper Dragons, which we know is the company that funds Swift. Okay, so investments in China seem to be a point, a key point for these billionaires. Um, or you know. That they're probably trillionaires when you really think about it, uh, both Tim Draper and Larry Fink, when you think of all the assets that their businesses have under management. But that's an entirely different subject. Um, <laughs> but again, the point to take away here is that China is something that these billionaires want to invest in. And what is in China? Swift, Swift coin. Okay. Now, if that wasn't enough, oh, 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 Black Roo, you're, you're reaching a little bit, right? He he just said that we're underinvested in China. A couple you know, points here that could mean, and, and also to kind of reference on, the framework of that could mean a whole bunch of different things, right? Um, let's go ahead here. Let's kill our Telegram right quick, though. Um, and I'm going to come over to the top comments just to. Ensure that you heard that. What is up, Underdog Research Channel? Again, I told you guys we're going to touch on some of Underdog Research Channel's uh, research here. Appreciate my brother being here today. Really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, Black Root, can't wait to watch this. There's a huge connection uh, between these. I will be releasing. Your uh, research is core to this connection. Great. Appreciate it, brother. Can't wait to see what you release on that. Definitely, guys, make sure to go like and subscribe over there and uh, hit the bell notifications so you can be the first to get information like this. Like, honestly, uh, between us guys, we've been really leading edge on this Swift um, on this Swift research. And I feel very, very, very proud about that. So shout out to the Underdog Research Channel. Uh, definitely go over there and get him a like and subscribe. Um, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> this is making me pretty excited, y'all. Okay, so let's let's go over here. Now we're we're gonna add to that, right? Let me see. I, I better have linked it. I better have linked it. I might not have linked it. Okay, what we'll, we'll have to um we'll have to pull up the story here. Let me just go ahead and uh oops, we'll kill that. We'll kill my email. You don't need to see that. Uh, let's go over here and okay, we can kill that too. Okay, so let's go over here and let's put it in. Uh, Larry Fink, ZZ Ping dinner. Okay, so you always hear China versus the US, China versus the US. My man said we're under invested in China. And a little over a year ago, or maybe a little less than a year ago, Larry Fink and friends sat down to a dinner <laughs> with Xi Jinping, okay? 
So at that dinner, of course, was China's leader, Xi Jinping, Tim Cook, um, the leader of Boeing, um, along, amongst others, okay? Um, and this was in America. So Apple's Cook, BlackRock's Fink, among CEO guests at dinner with Xi Jinping. So if you're still believing that whole narrative, like uh, the red, the red scare from China is 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 like trying to kill U.S. freedoms, well, <laughs> really temper that narrative with our biggest CEOs sitting down at a dinner with this guy, okay, with with with, with uh, Ch the Chinese leader. So there's there seems to be a little. Um, difference of what's what the narrative is and what's actually happening okay so u.s business tidings including tim cook black rocks larry fink are set to attend a dinner with xi jinping okay and this was in america okay also blackstone believe black rock is a subsidiary of blackstone but chief ceo um steve swartzman visa uh ceo Ryan McInerney, I would think that was how you say that. Um, apparently, Elon was there too. I, I saw in another article, um, but yeah, they 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 sat down to a dinner. Um, with Xi Jinping, okay. Okay, so to. Again, and th think, well, who's in China? Swift, okay? So I think that's clearly laid out right there, okay? Now, all of this pulls back into BlackRock and the news with Build L. Now, if you guys have not, not followed what's going on with Build L, you definitely need to. Build L is essentially a BlackRock stablecoin, okay? So BlackRock tokenized Build L. Um, BlackRock tokenized Build L fund, now convertible to USDC 24-7 via Circle. So tokenization is right here. It's here now, okay? This should make you bananas gonzo about the crypto market okay especially this bull market coming up here all the infrastructure is being put into place right now with the biggest companies in the world some of the biggest billionaires in the world which we've shown you right it's all being put into place now okay so <laughs> this makes me bananas gonzo about crypto right now okay so now, Buildell is, is kind of masking the name Buildell kind of masks what this actually is. Um, okay, so this is what it actually stands for. Um, BlackRock USD Institution Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund. So it's actually a stable coin. So they're basically saying that the stable coin can now be converted 24-7 into USDC. Okay. No thanks. So that is huge. Okay. And of course, who are players here? Coinbase as well. Okay. BlackRock's Build L Fund officially named the BlackRock USD USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund represents a significant foray by the world's lar largest asset manager into the realm of blockchain and digital assets. Launched in a partnership with Coinbase, um, Build L is a blockchain-based investment fund designed to offer U.S. dollar yields through tokenization. There we go. Um, marking a notable step in integrating traditional finance with blockchain technology. Okay. And then here we're going to have some of the big tokenization players coming up. The fund leverages U U.S. Uh, 100 million. The fund leverages U.S. 100 million in USDC stablecoin transactions and is supported by a consortium of firms, including Anchorage Digital Bank, 
BitGo, Fireblocks, and Coinbase. Okay, so amazing. And we've we've heard of Fireblocks before because we've talked about Sologenic on here, right? Sologenic has a deal with Fireblocks. Fireblocks is um, in another consortium with um, um, GFI, right? Um, GFI is Ackman backed. We've talked about Bill Ackman on here before, right? Um, GFI is Goldfinch, by the way, Goldfinch crypto. But here we are with USDC, BlackRock, all of those players. Now, who is USDC? They're actually a World Economic Forum partner. So it goes all the way up to those guys. Okay. So see all the connections here. And remember, um, USDC has that intimate partnership with um, Coinbase through Stellar. Okay. Like, guys, this, this should just blow your mind, right? This should blow your mind. So this is partners. You can see up here and then circle if, th if this was out of the way. But you can see their insignia there, their logo, um, which <laughs> I'm sure if we had someone who was into the the conspiracy and the, the occult, they could tell you that this has a lot of occult meaning to it. But that's a different subject. They always choose occult things. But anyway, um, Circle is a global financial technology firm that enables businesses of all sizes to harness the power of cryptocurrency and public blockchains for payments and commerce worldwide. Circle is a pioneer of the fastest growing fiat currency backed by US, backed by stablecoin USD, USD coin. OK, and I thought um, I saw another article that said. Circle uh, CEO said that uh, USDC is like the US dollar with superpowers. Okay. So essentially, you can almost say that this is our like CBDC for the dollar, essentially. Okay. Here, right now. Okay. It's here. So um, I could go up and show you where is that? Where Stellar and MoneyGram so so keep in mind now this also brings back and they, they said it they mentioned it in the article just a little bit, but we have to kind of press on it here. MoneyGram announces plans to uh, launch a non-digital non-custodial digital wallet. Remember, um, SwiftCoin had posted this, right? But then Underdog did his research and they took it down. So apparently they didn't want this, like, they didn't want this really known out here, right? So they took, they took down that post, okay? But let's go back here. Okay. So that's, that's the non-custodial non wallet. And here's the intimate relationship with Stellar and Coinbase and USDC. Coinbase integrates with USDC on Stellar, okay? And note, they say, enabling millions of institutional and retail customers to access a truly global digital dollar. So not just in my words now, an actual press release from Stellar, okay? Um, here it is, <laughs> right, right, right in your face. Okay, so let's go ahead, close this out so we don't get too chunky around here. Um, clunky, clunky and chunky. Um, okay, so let's go down here. Okay, so then, okay.
And did we press this point? I'm not sure if we pressed this point or not. But 24 hours convertible. BlackRock tokenized build L fund now convertible to USDC 24 hours, 24 seven via circle integration. Okay. So <laughs> essentially this kind of, this eventually will probably even open the doors for them to tokenize things like stocks and have them available 24 hours a day. So I know when we were talking, right, how does Metapath and, and everything open things up for Swift, right? Because it's just Metapath just working with NFTs, right? And we think of NFTs as these little penguin pictures, right? And that's, the, that's kind of the hijack. I think they kind of did that on purpose to get us to ignore NFTs. But no, NFTs are way bigger than penguin pictures and, and pictures of JPEGs and like pictures of like dogs and monkeys and all of that. It's way bigger than that. It's the tokenization of any and everything, okay? Which we're we're going to get into more of that later. Okay, so we did show this article. All right, so let me. Okay, is that the same article? Okay, the same article. Okay, boom. Okay, so now we get into Ondo Finance. Now, Build L, part of it is stored on Ondo with Ondo Finance, okay? Check out Ondo Coin, okay? Shout out to the Patreon. It was on the Patreon list when it first came out. It's a little bit up from that, but anything under a dollar for Ondo Coin to me is a, you know, is a bargain. Um, knowing that they are holding Build L like this. So Ando Finance is the largest holder of Buildell, um, holding 38%. And here's that 38. That's a number that comes up a lot with these people. But anyways, um, <laughs> continue going. Um, of the total supply, um, now Ando's OUSG is fully backed by Buildell. And they keep saying Buildell when, like, okay, it's actually a stable coin. It's actually a BlackRock stablecoin. So they're the not largest holder of tokenized BlackRock stablecoin. So Ondo Finance is definitely a sleeper out here. Definitely a sleeper out here. Okay. So keep in mind Ondo Finance. Let's go over here. Uh oh, did um okay. Okay, I can't wait to see I can't wait to see uh underdogs update on this. Okay, so now we've clearly kind of laid out the black rock rock for you guys, right? So we got black rock here. Black rock is connected to Coinbase, which is connected to Circle, which is connected to Stellar. Okay, and BlackRock seems to be the American piece of this tokenization. Okay, but you heard out of Larry Fink's own mouth, we are underinvested in China. You heard out of Draper's own mouth, China is a key to my investments. He 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 said that. Like, and it wasn't. He was asked a question, and he voluntarily said that information, which is crazy. That I, I never, th I, I didn't think he would say that information, but there it is, right? So, in this whole American backdrop to tokenization, we have China. Okay, so now let's move on to the Shima capital piece of this. Okay, so Shima Capital. Okay, now we're gonna get to the underdog crypto, the under the under um underdog research channel portion. Okay. Uh we're gonna reference his video and definitely like I'm only touching on certain pieces of this video. You guys definitely need to go see the full plan billionaire billionaire blueprint and like 
take notes like seriously. If you really want to stand, understand what's going on, but if you're just fine with saying, okay, billionaires, Swift coin, China, BlackRock, okay, I'm just going to buy some. Okay, that's fine too. You know, not financial advice, but if that's what you want to do, I mean, go right ahead. But if you really want to just understand the depth of this, because understanding the depth of this gets you to other cryptos like Ondo Finance, right? Gets you to other things like Stellar, right? So you get to see some of the other players besides SwiftCoin, which we're, 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 we're definitely all about Swift blockchain. And it's probably going to be one of the biggest earners. Well, you know, not financial advice, but <laughs> these people are telling you that China is an important part of the plan, right? Okay. But the reason I'm, I'm encouraging you to listen to all of it and to look at all of it, you get to see some of the ancillary important players and possibly invest in those too if you want to, if you want to have your portfolio diverse like that, okay? Um, and just for, for full disclosure, I'm probably invested in every one of these things that I'm talking about, okay? So full disclosure, right? Um, there we go. So let's listen to this right quick. And settlements. I'll put it in blue, folks. As crypto focused venture capitals continue to raise massive. So here's 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 one of the things we want to we know focus on here. Crypto focused VCs, and this is what uh Underdog was just saying, uh raise massive billion dollar funds, okay? Um to We've identified a pocket of opportunity to support Web3 founders with their first institutional checks that are considered too small for other tier one investors. So they're hitting everything kind of underneath the black rocks that is going to need to be put into place as infrastructure for all this money. Because essentially what we're seeing is the tokenization and the conversion of money from fiat to cryptocurrency and blockchain i've said this years ago the plan has been put into place years ago again this is from august 17th uh 2022 um so plans been in place for years they're just getting all the infrastructure in place now right and we have the ability to kind of be on the ground floor of all of this um infrastructure because half the world still thinks cryptocurrency is the scam right okay um so um one thing to note here which underdog has nicely underlined for us uh shima capital invested in early rounds of blockchain capital startups across all verticals with check sizes of 500 to 200 to 2 million okay areas of focus include but are not limited to consumer uh, decentralized entity um, remember all of these all of these different uh, groups too um, decentralized identity like DIDs um, shout out to arc block um, definitely check out on my channel I had uh, Robert Mao the um, CEO of arc block on the channel his company is a leading company in decentralized identity and um, he is also a an Asian gentleman. So, um, you know, there we are again with China. Who knows, like, all the different connections that, that Arc Black has over there and all the different things that are going on over there. But we, sh we showed you this. We told you this with, um, uh, let me go ahead and do some one of my alerts. That'll, like, I'll have, like, 85 people in the comments, like, your smoke detector, bro. Uh, <laughs> but let's let's see what's going on. It's not my smoke detector. It's actually a um, a um, one of my alerts. Okay, the Swift. Okay, hey, down to uh, forty eight now, or point zero zero four eight. Okay, believe me, Draco Lowens. I grabbed some more too at like um. I think around six, like 0.006. So 
<laughs> um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not too happy with it either. However, it just gives me um, a, a enough time to get more at this. OK. Because as you can see here by the um, different RSIs. This is the part of the cycle where it's cycling back around, right? So what what goes up is it's it, it's a cycle. So it's gonna cycle back up, okay? Um, not financial advice again, but um, you know, knowing the things that we know about RSI and the things that we know about, yeah, the things that we know about RSI, it's oversold at this point. Okay, a lot of the crypto market is oversold. It's not just Swift. Um, it's not just that. You know what I mean? So, same looking thing on the RSI. So it's, it's not just Swift. It's the entire market. Um, but this kind of makes sense, right? Because the having is coming, and then after the having. After the having, I expect for things to, a lot of people expect for things to take off, right? So, all right, so we, you know what? Okay, so where were we? Okay, so Ando, I think we just got through showing. Okay, now Shima Capital. Yes, Shima Capital. Where were we? Okay, so remember all these different things. I digital, um, digital identity, DID, social media, Content ownership, DAOs, gaming, metaverse, um, composable financial systems such as DeFi, uh, regenerative finance, payments and settlements. Okay. Um, remember all of these things. Okay. Cross chain communication, data platforms, blockchain automation, decentralized infrastructure, all of that. Remember it billion dollar plus funds i'll put a green star you can see it we have identified a pocket opportunity to support web tree founders folks metapath swift blockchain through this partnership and collaboration with christina shen shima capital john shen at the head of this stuff too folks all of it connected we know that they received a five hundred thousand to a two million dollar check in twenty twenty one to grow that metapath connection, folks. Folks, this is what I'm talking about. And it told us who were the billionaire investors, folks. See, in the article it stated that Shima Capital, which began investing in early twenty twenty one right when MetaPath was funded by them in 2021. So again, so Underdogs kind of laid out to us the Shima Capital has like kind of an undisclosed investment in MetaPath involving all of these different billionaires and brands, right? Bill Ackman, Alan Howard, Andrew Yang, um, Animoca Brands, and Dragonfly Capital. Uh, today, we're, we're kind of going to touch on Ackman and Howard and Animoca Brands. We're not going to get too much into Andrew Yang and Dragonfly Capital. They'll probably have to be for another show. Um, but we're, we're going to get into Ackman, Howard, and Animoca Brands. Okay. So take all of this in. Remember the numbers that he mentioned 500K to 2 million. Okay. Let's look at a company called. Boost VC, okay? Who is Boost VC? Well, Boost VC happens to be Adam Draper's company. 
Who's Adam Draper? Tim Draper's son. Okay. <laughs> so now what, what are they going to tell you? We lead pre-seed rounds. Boost VC is an early stage venture capital firm with 200 million um, under management. Okay. In San Mateo, California, founded by Adam Draper. San Mateo, Cap California is uh, where Draper University is. Okay. Founded by Adam Draper and Brayton Williams, we invest in 500K um, in deep tech, um, pre C startups, i.e., aerospace. AR, VR, energy, climate, robotics, crypto, uh, bio, AI, AI and machine learning, ocean, materials, and more. We target startups raising two million or less. So the same numbers, 500K to 2 million. Okay. The same numbers that Underdog just laid out for us. So this may have something to do with what Biden signed as far as like underdogs laid that out for us too right but it's the same amount of money from 500k to two two million does this mean that shima capital and um and um draper um and, and boost boost vc are the same company no i don't i don't think so but um i think this may be taking advantage of a certain plan yeah so here's here's velo too so let me just close these for today. Let me just close that down. Okay. So, all right. So, so clearly that, that price point is something that they're trying to hit. Okay. Now what we're going to notice is there's a lot of crossover between these, these companies. Okay. Like Bruce, Bruce VC, um, Draper and, or Adam Draper and uh all these different things okay so so shima capital we got shima capital there and we're gonna bring up the shima capital portfolio okay go over to crypto rank.io crypto rank.io will allow you to see some of the things in uh shima capital's portfolio okay What do you know? Ando Finance is in Shima Capital's portfolio. So this this one that's doing the whole thing with BlackRock and Bill Dell is in Shima Capital's portfolio. Of course, a lot of other ones that are in also um, um, the Draper Dragon portfolio are also in the Shima Capital portfolio because these dudes obviously have a connection together right so iotex galaxy they're both in the um um draper dragon portfolio uh, we got reserve rights reserve rights is um connected via um um what's his face um peter teal you know T peter teal's related to stellar and you know they got 25 different things in their uh 25 pages of things in their portfolio um, you know, we're not going to go through all of them, but we can see here clearly tokenization is important. And this actually gives a connection to BlackRock right here. OK, so we got that. Now, Boost VC going over to Adam Draper. We are we're led to a company called 21 Shares. Now, this is this is really great. Okay, 21 shares. Okay, so we're going to look at Boost VC's crypto portfolio. Okay, this blew my mind when I found, when I found this. Okay, so 21 shares, keep them in mind, but we're going to come back to that right quick, right? So in this particular uh thing they've exited coinbase on um you know this on this portfolio i'm not sure if draper associates exited coinbase but blue boost vc did okay 
I don't think that Draper Associates did, but Boost VC did. Okay, so um, in this particular um, part of the Draper ecosystem, they exited their investment of Coinbase. But I believe that Draper Associates still hold some. Okay, so just want to acknowledge that. But you can see here Decentraland, Data Lake, and we can see three more cryptocurrency exchanges. And what, what did this underdog um, video show us, right? Exchanges was one of the things, payments and settlements was one of the things these, they wanted to hit. And remember, uh, Boost VC is targeting same type of companies that Shima is targeting, okay? So... Yeah, let's go back. So Coin Haku, this is in Singapore and Malaysia, again in the China type of area, right? Singapore is huge for China and the business that they do. Coin Jar, this is in uh, Australia. So add another country that Draper has an exchange in. We, we went over like so many in the, in the Draper video. So definitely go back on over that and Coin Nut, another one in um, Singapore. You can also see here Filecoin, which I did not know. This is the first time that we know know that uh, Draper had some exposure to Filecoin. Uh, Filecoin is big in China as well. Yes, Draper's exposed there. Okay, we've already showed you that Draper is exposed to Gemini. This just more and um, makes it even heavier. Another one of his subsidiaries has Gemini on their list. So who knows how big uh, his actual exposure is there. But And here we are with Bitfield, another kind of payment type of deal. Um, Stockholm, Sweden, 21 shares. Let's go over here and check these guys out. So, God. Okay. So, 21 shares is holding ARK Invest Bitcoin ETF. So I always wondered if there was some connection to Draper and ARK Invest because remember, Kathy Wood is hail, hailed as one of the best early investors in, in Tesla. Now, does that mean that Draper owns part of ARK? I don't know. I can't say. I can't say. But what we can say is a company ran by his son has a piece of 21 shares and 21 shares seems to be pushing ARK Invest Bitcoin ETF. Okay. So extremely, extremely interesting there. Throws another kind of billionaire company into the uh, ring here in ARK Invest. Um, just, just very interesting there knowing ARK Invest and how they are with Tesla and all of that. So that just throws a whole nother connection in there. That that very much intrigued me. Very much intrigued me. Um, okay. So there we are with kind of a Shima Capital connection there. But we're going to go even deeper here into Shima Capital with these guys okay so let's go let's go okay so let's let's go hit this part of underdog's video here where he highlights uh shook focus let me close that let me close this one let me make sure we're, we're all still with me here okay I'm sorry, I forgot to remove that one from the screen.
And we're going to get to all of these comments. Just keep them coming. We'll have a Q&A session like we normally have. Okay, yeah, just keep all these comments coming. What's up, Danu? What's up, Josh Corbin? We'll definitely acknowledge everyone that's here. I appreciate everyone's here. 130 viewers, uh, 33 on the Gentleman Crypto, 51 on Black Roo, um, Twitter, and uh, 19 on Gentleman Crypto, 31 on Black Roo Investing. Love it, love it, love it. Let's keep going here. So let's highlight this Shook Focus um, research here. And shout out to Miro for the for the mind maps, bro. This makes things a lot easier to to like filter and um, organize thoughts, right? Here we go. Almost loaded. Okay. Wallet. The math wallet, token pocket, and other hardware wallets and mobile apps. Mobile wallets. You heard it right there. Yep, yep. I got to go back a little bit. That was a little bit too quick. Okay, sorry. Let's go. Here, let's go to the three minute mark. Let's full screen it. Or maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, let's full screen it. And play. I told you listen to Shook Focus Digital. I suggest you listen to Black Rue Investing. I told you to check out The Third Eye with Indigo Saint. Yep. Check and them out, I guys. all did videos and covered SwiftCoin. But what did Shook Focus Digital say? This is what Shook said about Token Pocket. Back to another episode of Shook Focus. And in this one, we're going to be taking a look at SwiftCoin. What is SwiftCoin? It's becoming more and more popular. We got Black Blue and Underdog Crypto going in on this project. Why is it all of a sudden starting to gain traction? And why is it bubbling? Why are people taking a deeper look at this project? I think it's time that Shooks took a peek at this project too. They've also integrated their app with the Elipal wallet, the Math wallet, Token. So it looks like they have cross-chain slops using Ledger Live, which is, of course, Another Draper asset, Ledger. I'm very proud to be able to help users of Elipal, Math Wallet, um, Token Pocket, and more hardware and mobile wallets are integrated with the swap experience. So as of today, 30 wallets have integrated our swap services and partnering with more. And as Shook has told you, they, they almost partner with everybody, Swift. So they're going to get those, those nice fees and everything flowing through their systems. Pocket. And, and you can see here, Swift and Metapath are integrated. So all these different things can flow through Swift and all these different payment and and thing, and wallets, um, payment, payment apps and wallets, okay? So understand it's not like, it's not just like little pictures that's going to be flowing through this. It's going to be like stocks, things like real estate, everything tokenized. It's like essentially like what the futures market is doing, right? Like how if you can buy a bottle, a barrel of oil on a futures market and you kind of settle up your contracts, you don't have to give anyone, uh, you don't have to go buy a barrel of oil. So essentially you can now tokenize anything. On anything like real estate, etc. But now we're gonna get into and, and and we needed this background to let you know. Hey, Metapath is 
is a part of Swift. Okay. Let's go close this guy and come over here and talk about Animoca brands. Okay. Now, remember how uh, Underdog showed you Alan, Alan, um, Alan Howard was a part of this. Animoca Brands, Dragonfly Capital, Bill Ackman. Okay. Let's let's just look at Animoca Brands a little bit here. Okay. We're going to look at Animoca Brands funding round. Okay. For Animoca Brands, the company. So what we're going to notice is. Gemini, Winklevoss Capital. So Gemini, remember, is owned by Draper. So some portion of this may be Draper funds, right? So essentially, Animoca Brands is also owned by Draper, okay? Even though, you know, Animoca Brands guy himself is a millionaire, billionaire in his own right, but part of it is owned by Draper. But guess what? Also, Dragonfly Capital with, with uh, Johannes Rowett. Johannes Rowett is also part owner <laughs> of Dragonfly, of uh, Animoca Brands. And somewhere down here, we have Coinbase Ventures. Oh, Atari as well. So... And the freaking Hong Kong government. <laughs> so it goes deep enough that the Hong Kong government is also invested in Animoca brands. So China is truly like in, through Hong Kong, huge players in this. But there we have it. Also, Coinbase Ventures, which we know Coinbase is partly owned by Draper as well. So more money cross pollination if you will here um into animoca brands via these different billionaires okay so you can see they raised darn near a billion dollars okay so but dodge the hijack of it just being like little little penguin nfts and and think of it as more than that which we're going to go over okay we're, which we're going to go over um Okay, so now let's look at the Animoca Brands portfolio, right? And the thing that also the thing to remember here is this has been in the works for a while. This didn't just pop up and happen right now, right? So Decentraland, which remember when we looked at Draper VC portfolio or Boost VC portfolio, we see Decentraland is on the list. Metaverse, right? So who knows how the cross pollination goes here? Who knows? Does this also mean since they partly own um, Animoca Brands that all of these things that Animoca Brands um, has in its portfolio are now Dragonfly and Draper assets? You could say that. Again, we already know Draper was invested in um, Polygon Matic. We saw that on the Draper Associates page so there's so much um kind of obfuscation off obfuscation here that it's kind of hard to say who owns what and who who doesn't own what because the money's kind of all, all the money from different pools is kind of mixed together but essentially you could almost say that everything that animoca brands portfolio has 
is essentially also a Draper and Dragonfly asset. Here's Polygon. Yeah, that was the one we wanted to show, right? Polygon. Of course, we know Ledger and all of that too, just to kind of refresh that information. But here we are, right? So Animoca Brands, essentially you can say that their portfolio is um, Dragonfly and Draper portfolio. Now, Hong Kong, remember, Hong Kong loosened the laws so that cryptocurrency could come in there, okay? And this happened last year. And when this happened last year, certain coins pumped, like this is on February 16th. Certain coins pumped, like Filecoin, um, um, VeChain. Little did we know that these were Draper Dragon assets, right? These were assets that Draper actually owns, right? And remember, what what did um what did um Larry Fink said? We're underinvested in China, <laughs> okay? And he had a dinner with Xi Jinping. I look, look at this. Look at this. Tron founder Justin Sun has repeatedly stated that cattle from China and other Asian countries will drive the next bull market. Are, are you guys seeing that? <laughs> like how 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 much more do we have to um um like pound it in the head right here, right? And I'm saying this not only to you, but I'm saying this to myself as well, right? And remember, underdog crypto video or underdog researches video showed you how Justin Sun and Huobi was connected to Swift blockchain. Okay. So we have it right there. But you can see here, basically, the key to take away from this article, and I can share this in the, in the, um, in the Telegram. Um, if anyone needs to, just let me know. Just say, oh, can you show me? Can you give me that article you had about Hong Kong uh, legalizing cryptocurrency trading? And I'll just, just give it to you. Uh, in the telegram. So so here it is. The move expected to increase the flow of capital into China, into China, into digital assets. Hong Kong will legalize the purchase, sale, and trading of cryptocurrencies for all its citizens in June. Uh, the move will also include mainland Chinese institutions. So Chinese institutional investors. And this happened June 1st of 2023 so they opened the door for this to be to happen here right here in that time golden and again pointed out from justin sun china will drive the next bull market so here we are with investing in swift very much seems like to me China will drive this next bull market. Okay. So one thing I wanted to throw in about Alan Howard before we take take off on this one and go into the uh the chat for questions. Hedge fund giant Alan Howard backs um, financial NFTs project, okay, called Nested. And this was in 2022, March 2nd, 2022. So 32 is a number they, these guys like to use all the time too. 32, 23 uh, incantations of that, right? So 32... Two, 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 two. Like, okay. So, but anyways. Um, so, nested would be bring financial and so you can make basically make your portfolio into an NFT. So, when I say that NFTs is everything, it literally is everything, including NFTing a portfolio. 
possibly. So this is nested. This is this is a company he put money into. So there's that. And this is just to show that he's connected to Shima Capital. Again, underdog, let us know. That. So we kind of pieced together all the different billionaires here, like a Justin Sun, an Alan uh, Howard, um, uh, Shima Capital CEO guy, uh, Bill Ackman. All of them kind of pieced together here. Dragonfly Capital guy, Joel Rowetz, Tim Draper, uh, Yao Tzu, uh, Animoca Brands guy. Uh, we, we went over John Chin last episode. So that's what we went over on Wednesday, how John Chin is like the MVP. That was what we did on Wednesday. So only only people we truly didn't touch is like uh, Andrew Yang. Is the, is the only guy we, we didn't touch. But you can add into this Justin Sun. You can add into this Larry Fink. Okay? But here, let me just play this right quick. Venture funds. In August, they announced they raised $200 million. And, and back billionaires. That's a B, folks. Bill. Just want to kind of grab this still. So, Shima Capital, undisclosed um, investment for, um, for Meta, Metapath, includes Bill Ackman, Alan Howard, Andrew Yang, Animoca Brands, Dragonfly Capital. So, essentially, now they can use this platform to onboard. Anything from BlackRock, because we showed you how Shima Capital is also invested in Nando Finance, and tokenize anything and move it to anywhere in China, move it to any of these cryptocurrency exchanges that we saw. Look at we showed we showed you Coin Haku, which is in um, Singapore. Like literally, we've kind of connected everything here. Let me let me go back and show you Coin Haku again, and all and all of those connections. We showed you how Draper is connected to Gemini and Coinbase, so we got those exchanges. So we think of those exchanges just just for their cryptocurrencies, but also what will be next is NFTs. And I say that this tokenization is bigger than AI. Because AI is kind of under the umbrella of this. You can use AI for like algorithms and uh, automatic market making of all of this different stuff. But really, the key point of it is tokenization. So here's CoinHaku, buy and sell digital assets in Singapore and Malaysia. Okay. CoinJar, simplest way to send and receive and store cryptocurrency. Melbourne, Australia, CoinNut, the most secure cryptocurrency exchange platform in Singapore. And then you'll have a whole bunch of other things here that kind of represent World Economic Forum and and, and, and different uh, interests like, where are we? NFTs that fight climate change. So here it is, NFTs here. Um, and you know, climate change is one of the things that World Economic Forum always hits on that they they want to you know they want to combat wow i didn't i didn't see monero in this list but apparently monero's in the list too okay nifty gateway you know nifty gateway is nothing but nfts new york and new york this is gemini's platform Okay, Polychain Capital is related to these guys as well. I guess I just needed to go down a little further on this one. ShakePay, Canadians, buy and sell Bitcoin, Scale, 
we went over this exchange before, but that's the one in India. Sun Exchange, Cape Town, South Africa. Like, like <laughs> it's, it's like all here, right? Zcash. See, I had no idea these guys were involved in Monero because because they tell you that like, OK, Monero, like, you know, the federal government wants to shut Monero down and all this other stuff. But here we are. <laughs> it's in the Draper, um, the Boost VC Adam Draper portfolio. Luca, software and data support operations for crypto asset ecosystem. Man alive. So Etherscan, I didn't know Etherscan was lo located in Kuala, Kuala, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia. So again, again in Asia, right? So I'm kind of believing Justin Sun when he says, China and Asian markets will move the next crypto bull run. And he said that in 2023. So I'm kind of I'm kind of believing you, Justin. But let's go over here to comments. Who's this producer? <laughs> What's up, uh, Riviera Group? Hope you're still here. What technology does Swift Chain share with another blockchain? Um, I'm not sure about that question, uh, Minusk. Oh, uh, I'm not sure what what you mean by what technology do they share? Um, MetaPath and um, Swift Blockchain essentially do the same thing. They're ran by the same people. And MetaPass focus is NFTs, but it's using the Swift technology. So maybe that's maybe that's what you're getting at. What's up, Kid Graybo? Peace, peace, peace. One second, guys. Cool. Back. Uh yeah, again. You've heard me too, bro. I know, I know how you feel about that. Um, but I'm about to go on there and grab some more, to be honest with you, especially after all this information. Any alpha on Swift C releasing the actual blockchain? Do they even have one or are they keeping it on the low? Well, a little information on that. We never got to these guys yet, I don't think. But if we come over here to And this also goes to one of the comments that you left me too, G. Uh, okay, yep, it's here, I believe. Okay, Draper Gorin Home. So Draper Gorin Home, I don't, I can't remember if we went over this or not, but Draper Gorin Home. These are. This is the side of Draper's. <laughs> investments in which he has the Casper Labs investment, okay? So why don't I no. Okay, so in here right here, Draper going home, Casper Labs. Okay? But I was looking into Draper I was looking into Gorin and Home the other parts of that collaboration. And what did I find? As soon as this comes up, that it seems like Gorin is building it a Draper blockchain. Okay, so Alan, Alan Gorin, founding partner of Draper Gorin Blockchain. And you'll see a 
founding partner Draper Gorin blockchain. So according to since June 23rd or since June of 2023, there's a Draper Gorin blockchain. So are they building their own blockchain? And will this possibly go on Swift? I would kind of think so. Um, and then you can see he's board member. So basically, like these three formed their own group and they're into a bunch of different companies like Onera, which is another kind of institutional type business, um, Lunar Crush. But um, this other guy, Home, is really into Dubai it seems so joseph home if we look at his linkedin tons of connections to dubai and i remember g you showed us that other connection from swift on dubai right and you can see here um you can see someone with traditional kind of arabic garb there um for like princes and whatnot so you can see if we go down here a crew crew is an innovative blockchain based platform for fractionalized real estate investing here we are again another one for nfts fractionalizing um, real estate um Dogami, part-time advisory board member, Arab Emirates, UAE, return finance, part-time, Dubai, UAE, remote, co-founder, rewardable, United States Arab Emirates on site. So Dubai is getting into this blockchain game, game and... Um, Joseph Holm seems to be helping them as a part of Draper Gorin Home. And there it is, right? There it is. Um, so let's see how that part plays out. Right? Shout out to my guy, Universe, uh, Mystery Arcade, Occult Multiversity. Shout out to Courtney Johnson. Shout out to Jay Everything. We read my brother Underdog, Crypt, uh, Underdog Research Channel's uh, stuff. Uh, many don't understand that there needs to be a certain degree of immigration in the U.S. because uh, there are so many jobs that Americans don't want to do anymore. Immigrants will do for much less pay. I agree. I agree, Riviera Group. But I, I know that there's some missing. I think there's a little mis not miscommunication. I think there's a little ignorance on the American people. And I mean that not as a, the negative connotation. I mean, ignorance is in just they don't know. Um, about who the immigrants actually are. I think everyone's just assuming that they're Mexicans and Mexico's economy is actually doing pretty nicely. Um, it's I, I don't think that many of those immigrants are Mexican. I believe that a lot of them may be Venezuelan because Venezuelans, Venezuela's money failed. So I, I do believe that a large amount of those immigrants are Venezuelan, not Mexican. Um, what's up, Prospector? What's up, 1980 AD2? Fiat doesn't make you a rich man. Resources do. Paper means nothing if you can't buy products. 100%. Just ask Ukraine, all the money in the world, but yeah, I get you 100%. Uh, 100%. 100%. Um, right. Not sure exactly what, what point that was in reference to, 
But uh, I, I get what you're saying. But right now, I think what we're what we're seeing is the conversion, like of fiat to digital currency. Um, that's that's what's happening right now, right? Um, and I do think the people that are thinking that fiat is the way are going to be really, really left behind um, because they think that crypto is this scammy thing or blockchain is this scammy thing. I know they're making this designation now between blockchain and crypto, but for the layman, for, for the layman, they're all the same thing. There's no designation. Like you say crypto, you say blockchain. They're like, what? What's the difference? You know. So, um, yeah. And I think uh, at least one of the designations, one of the differentiations that Bitcoin Zay made. Shout out to the gentleman of crypto, uh, King Bless, Bitcoin Zay. One of the designations uh, Bitcoin Zay made was these racist memes and stuff like that. These memes and things that aren't really going to be worth anything most of them are crypto and um blockchains more like things like ondo finance swift blockchain that's blockchain um you know i'm not i'm going to kind of just stray away from that because i don't think most i'm going to stray away from the designation cuz i don't think most people know the difference if I say crypto, if I say block blockchain, I'm I'm gonna mean pretty much the same thing because I think the majority of people just don't know the difference. Um, so uh, Elon is threatened by China's electronic cars and the accelerated success they're having. I I, I don't know. Maybe maybe he is. I, I honestly think that China and Elon and all of this same thing for. Same thing, like we just shown you uh, all the people behind Draper, right? I, I, I don't think that, I, I honestly don't think that, I think we really got to separate ourselves from this China versus US thing because the people who are in charge are the same people. It's not, it's not a di division. Let's, Let's really try to break away from that. Because when you have that division thing, they make you think, okay, US, not China. Like, and you miss the point that the same people are controlling it, right? Right? Who sat down to, to meet? Elon was there meeting with Xi Jinping. He was in the room for that. You know what I mean? Like, he was meeting with them. He was meeting with uh, Xi Jinping, the leader of China. So if it's how the news tries to display it, how mainstream media tries to display it as Elon's threatened by China, I don't think he would be in that room for that meeting. So let's really try to stray away from this because really the people like Draper and BlackRock are saying they're underinvested in China. My 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 the majority of my wealth comes from China. So really, these are the guys behind Chinese investing and every like a lot of the Chinese people that you see might just be the front men, just like we've seen in kind of black culture, and that you know, you got the Jay-Z's and the Russell Simmons, but really behind them are other people, you know what I mean? I, I, I got to be careful, right? Really, Jay-Z and, and Russell Simmons and all of those guys, Kanye, they're just the face, the front men, but the money behind them is different, you know? Um, what's up? What's up, uh, Cryptwork? Uh, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Appreciate Cryptwork for being in the house. Um, and I'm not trying to be like, I'm not trying to be hard on either. I just want to, I just want, as far as this, this, um, as far as this, the, our community goes, let's, let's try to separate from the mainstream media narrative and see what's really behind that. 
And to me, what's really behind it, to me, what what we've shown is that American and, and different billionaires are behind this and this whole type of thing that they try to say, like, somebody's threatened by China. That's that's not that's just noise. I, I don't I don't think that that's true. Um, what's up, GT nuts? Uh, Ice what, what Ice Wody? What do you think about synthetics? Um, I think synthetics is one of the ones that's under like under its umbrella. Like synthetics is another coin that's under this kind of same umbrella. Now, if we go and look at who, um, if they have any funders, I'm sure we're going to find some of these same people, right? And and yes, we do. Coinbase Ventures. DWF Labs. I told you guys about them. We went over them last show. I'm not sure exactly who Paragem is. Um, IOSG, not sure about those guys or Framework. But we know Coinbase Ventures. Remember? Draper owns portion. Uh, he's an initial investor in Coinbase. Um, DWF Labs. They they frequently um, collaborate. So, yeah, I think Synthetics is another one of these ones that's in that in that conversation. Let's see about Perigen here. Okay, yeah, per- apparently Perigem's really big and they're a tier one investor. So I have to do some research on Perigem. Or Paradigm, Paradigm, Paradigm. Uh, Stan, uh, Charles Hoskinson was pissed with being passed by ton. Is it time to be worried about Ada? Um, honestly, I don't hold that much Ada. And um, it definitely seems to me like Charles has something going on. Because, and by that I mean, all of F, uh, we, you know we talk a lot of LCX on here. All of LCX's first projects that they had through their like um, launch pad, were ADA projects. Um, there's there's definitely some, some connections to World Economic Forum and ADA, but as far as I've seen, ADA's um, technology doesn't seem to be as good as, um, you know, like XRP, Hedera, and all of this. But yet, ADA's price is more than Hedera, um, more than a couple, you know, some other things. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to say about Ada. Um, everything I see and hear, it seems like their technology isn't as good as everyone else's, but yet look at their price. So I don't know. Um, it seems like they have good things like, um, um, AGIX on there, but now AGIX is going to merge with um, uh, Fetch and all of those. Um, they seem to have things, good things like World Mobile Token on there. So I, I don't know. I really don't know what to say about ADA. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say about ADA. Um, yeah, but I would direct you to... Um, Crypto um crypto visor, he does some really good ADA content. Um, I, I really don't talk too much about ADA on here. Um how do you say this name? Hi. Hi Mat Hi Matoposis. I'm not sure. I probably killed it. I probably killed it. You can phonetically spell it for me and I'll, I'll try to say it right. Um, your res- you and your research is highly appreciated. Thank you. Very appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. Sub the new. Uh, been a while, bro. Been a while, bro. Thanks for coming through. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is this, this doesn't look, oh, 
Is this is this really Spanish? I don't know. La Carraj, la Mexicani. Is I don't think that's Spanish. I think that's something else. Um, yeah. If it, if it was Spanish, I think I know what it was, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe that's uh Portuguese or Italian or Italian. It looks like a romance language, but it's not uh Spanish. Um, here comes more discounts on the market, including Swift 100%. What's up, Josh Corbin? Uh, so does uh BlackRock w- want to work with Swift company? Um, well. It seems like to me that they're trying to de- be very cognizant of the lines of how people say there's China and there's the U.S. And it's very important for them to keep up the mainstream narrative, right? So, you know, BlackRock has its American path, even though, again, Larry Fink said we're underinvested in China. Okay, so BlackRock has its path and SwiftCoin and China has their path. Okay, but underneath, underneath the uh, surface there, I think there is collaboration there. And we showed you that by showing you that Shima Capital was an initial investor in Ando Finance. Okay, which... Ando Finance is holding 38% of BlackRock's Build L. Okay. So if we look at this, we see some of the those same players, Coinbase Ventures, which we can say has a connection to Draper because he owns parts of Coinbase. Shima Capital here, we told you, we've been telling you about that. Tiger Global, Tiger Tiger Global, you see these guys a lot with Draper Dragons, actually. So there, there's a connection there through Ando Finance, basically, would be the um would be the answer to your question there. So T, uh Pisa has huge potential. Uh, it has what? No, get out of here with that, uh, Sodi. Uh, I, I I can't. I, I'm timing you out for that, Sodi. Uh, we don't we don't need any of that here. Um, we're talking about no no. We're talking about Swift here. What are you talking about? Something else like a, a meme or whatever. But uh, Sodi, if you're still around, I'm timing you out for that. But come on over to Telegram. We talk about um, meme coins in the, the chat in Telegram. But like now that we're talking about Swift and all of that, there's why put that? There's there's no place for that right now. Um, let's keep going. Fire on the streets. <laughs> Fire on these uh, crypto streets, nothing but red, all bl- just blood in the streets, blood in the streets, 100% IG. Uh, what's up, Bitcoin Shango at Crypto Work and BK Crypto? What's the haps? BK Crypto, I need to get some of that merch, man. Uh, shout out to BK Crypto. I uh, I know Simon Family Investments uh, mentions that my guy got some merch. Um, definitely go over there and check it out. If anybody can throw a link to uh, BK Crypto's merch, appreciate it. Um, I got to check it out myself and get some. Courtney Johnson, I heard Francis Dayun today talking about a new presale for something called Master Protocol. I looked it up and on the site and um, it's talking about Swift blockchain apps. Remember, he in China right now. Okay. Okay, so this might be something to do some further research on, guys. Master Protocol and um, Courtney Johnson says it's uh, uh, also has some Swift on it. And Courtney, I know she's about her research. Hey, yeah, that's that is something to look into. Let's um, 
see if we could look quickly into that. Master protocol. And see where we are here. Oh, I'm starving, y'all. I just got up and went straight to research. And here in Arizona, it's 140 something. I need to eat something for real, for real. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I'll have to do some research into this. This is giving me all stuff that I'm not looking for. But yeah, I'll have to do some research into that. Let me write that down here. I might have to go to Francis's channel for that. So um, I'll definitely do some research on that. What's up, Edward Vincent? I need my at uh, real black fix. Uh, looking earlier, wondering when it was happening. Yeah, my bad on that one, man. I, I ran a little bit behind on the uh, research there. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you coming through. Coming over from the uh, Maximus Crypto community. Shout out to my guy Max. I'm trying, trying to uh, get some, some, some. Uh, no, nah, I won't tell y'all about that until we get it. We get it uh, scheduled. Uh, let's see here. Joey Ruel is the Black Prince best of crypto. Wow, bro, that's that's. Uh, I'll take that. I'll take it. I'll take it. Prince out here, bro. I appreciate it. Um, just popping in to say what up. Finna do some reading uh, with my oldest in a few minutes. Aw, that's that's the school, bro. That's cool, bro. Uh, Bitcoin Shango leading the next uh, generation of uh, uh, black intellectuals over here. Uh, reading to the little, to the children, to the children. <laughs> uh, Y'all stay cooler than Freddie Jackson sipping the milkshake in a snowstorm okay appreciate it appreciate it that wally the muskegon muskegon or uh, aristocrat what is going on salute salute boom uh crypto google uh black root google katie hahn look into her uh chris uh her history back of in coinbase let's let's look at that let's look at that Katie on Coinbase. Let's see what we find. Let's also close some sites. How should we do that? Okay. Oh, another venture capitalist. General partner at Andreessen Horowitz, okay? And we already showed you that Andreessen Horowitz, uh, Draper, uh, and, and uh, Tim Draper are boys. They're boys. So Katie Hahn has her own billionaire. Um, she's she's a billionaire in her own right, huh? All right, thank you there. Boom, a whole new, a whole new billionaire to uh, research here. Spent a decade as a federal prosecutor with the U.S. Department of Justice, where she focused on fraud, cyber, and corporate crime alongside 
the SEC, FBI, Treasury, okay? Prosecuted RICO, you know, okay, okay. Member of Board of Directors at Coinbase since 2017, which is when Swift and uh, when Swift started, she's a Stanford Law School grad. I think that's where Draper went to school. Tim Draper. Interesting. 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 Okay. All right. So you gave me a whole new, a whole new, uh, a whole new uh, person to look at there. Kids work giving giving respect to uh Bitcoin Shango. Courtney Johnson, China is also leading Bitcoin layer twos as well. That's good to know. Let's also start that on here. Baby Swift, uh be like uh STX like stacks i think stacks is available it's, it's one uh, another one that you can um use on swift white house uh bill ackman blackstone blackrock for rebuild of ua okay are they rebuilding um are they rebuilding something let me know there, boom. Uh, BTC at 62. Uh, okay, wow. Well, this 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 is uh this is before the having. They're they're trying to they're trying to get us a little bit scared here, but you know, hey, this is why you leave a little try to leave a little bit on the sidelines, right? Um Hey, just just a buying opportunity. Okay, Bitcoin Shango, have a good weekend. I'm buying Swift candles down to uh, 42. Okay, I see a couple of Swift tickers, which is correct. Uh, Swift um, is. This one, Courtney Johnson, this one or this one. Look for the one with the Swift logo, the blue logo that I showed you. Um, there's also another logo of theirs. Shout out to Super Chat. Who is that? Pair lifting up some waist and keep it up. I appreciate it, Natwali. Uh, the Muskegon Aristocrat. Thank you for the Super Chat. Thank you so much. Really, really means a lot. Okay, I think we have to pick up here. Ruel got me buying. You're killing it, Ruel. Thank you for all you do. Appreciate it, Joey. Time to buy everything 100%. Good God, the uh, degenerate. Uh, uh, Koinye poke alien, one hundred percent. Shout out to uh, um, that reminds me of uh, um, uh, crypto crypto bloods uh coin. So shout out to crypto blood. Definitely check out the channel. Um, all the funding is going to immigration program helping getting jobs versus you applying being denied. Yeah, well, you know. Um, it's part of the plan. It seems like Larry Fink just told us. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, there's no division. Tell people to study Skull and Bones, Bilderberg, well, <coughs> Builder, 100% Courtney Johnson. Like you, you know what's up. You know what's up. We're 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 eye to eye on that one. There is zero division, guys. Like this whole. Oh, Elon scared of China. 
uh, you know, uh, the red scare, Russia's going to, you know, all of that is BS. And if you look at that, 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 that uh, one that she just gave you there um, right after Skull and Bones, you check out that group, you would notice what's going on. There's also another one, which I, I won't say on here, but if anyone wants to ask me in the Telegram, there's another group that's totally in charge of just y'all, 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 y'all don't know. Just, just ask me in Telegram what, what other group that I was I was talking about. Um, we have a couple different groups in our Telegram, a general cut, a chat, and a quote unquote conspiracy. Uh, it's not conspiracy because it's actually true, but anyways, you got to put it under something, and that's what people know, right? Um, but but yeah, there's another group that's. <laughs> that's responsible as same as that that other that group right there then there's uh well i could say this one here on here I, everybody knows about this one bohemian grove like come on guys there's just there's not any division guys it's that's all noise it's all noise uh finally caught a live thanks for your efforts and time appreciate it what's up jay shiver uh 2.0 what's up danny tv 31 so family growing strong. Appreciate you, Danny. Did that nice uh, short for my guy, uh, Underdog Crypto. Uh, thank you for coming through and trying my content, bro. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you more around, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, XRP at 45 cents. Holy moly. 100%. Might be time to get some XRP in here. Um Honestly, guys, when it when it's a red day like this, and you and we know where crypto is headed, that's that really you gotta like change your uh, opinion with that, like and and feel like 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 what Joey's talking about here. Holy moly! Like it's it's sale day, bro. Everything's on sale today, right? Um, and and not let the red like get you like oh my like oh is it gonna go lord oh 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 no we got we got asian bitcoin etfs coming spot bitcoin etfs we got ethereum uh etfs probably coming pretty soon right we got remember i told you guys uh um coming uh 2025 january 1st 2025 uh january 1st 2025 these central banks will invest two percent of their reserves into cryptocurrency that is coming let me just bring that article up so you guys can see it so for anyone new it's like what what is, what is he what is he talking about <laughs> like let's 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 show you this is from Coin Telegraph. They kind of wrote it in a weird way, and I think this is on purpose. This was given on December 17, 2022. Crypto central banks to set standards on banks' crypto exposure from the Bank of Inter International Settlement (BIS). This new standard limits. Let's just cut that out. This new standard. Uh, this new standard uh, crypto reserves amongst banks to uh 2% by 2025 and goes into effect on January 1st 2025. So it doesn't limit it because they can't do it right now. So it's not limited. It's not limited cuz they can't invest in it right now. I don't know I I kind of know why, why she wrote it that way. I think she wrote it like that on purpose to make it confusing. But what goes into effect on January 1st, 2025 is that crypt that central banks can buy up to 2% of their reserves in cryptocurrency. They've never been able to do it before, but come January 25 or January 1st, 2025, central banks can buy 2% of their reserves um, in cryptocurrency. So what do you think they're going to buy? Probably XRP, probably uh, Bitcoin, probably um, Ethereum stuff like that maybe ondo finance who knows but that's a whole new bullish point for cryptocurrency in 2025 so knowing all of that stuff red days like this should just make you be like ooh yeah savings like ooh everything's on sale today so maybe uh at this time you can like adjust your portfolios something that you thought you couldn't get into before 
now is cheap enough for you to get into it. Like, like, you know, okay. So maybe today I'm like, okay, I'm taking something from something that I didn't like that much. And maybe I'm putting it into something I like more, you know? Okay. Ukraine. Okay. They're rebuilding Ukraine. I did know that boom. See, we got a lot of, we got a lot of, um, we got a lot of people in here that are counter mainstream narrative and I love it. I love it. So boom, if we go up, he's, he's telling you that BlackRock and all of these guys are rebuilding the Ukraine. So this, this is, this is a story as old as time, right? They're on both sides of the war. And then once the war is over, they go and they take their companies and they rebuild the city. It's a tale as old as time. <laughs> and here we have Boom saying White House, Ackman, Blackstone, BlackRock are rebuilding Ukraine. That is correct. Don't hear too much about it. They have you focus on the money that we're sending over there, but they're making money multiple ways on it. Just like Tim Draper is making money multiple ways here. Uh, he's invested in Coinbase. He's invested in the cryptos on Coinbase, and he's he's invested in payment systems, which you would which people will use to use crypto. Let's let's let's. It's it's hard to kind of wrap your mind around it, but I'll actually bring up the payment system. This is from Draper Associates, um, one of Draper's investment arms. If we go to Rise, so not only is he invested in the exchanges that hold the crypto, he's invested in here's here's Propy. That's 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 a crypto that does tokenization of real estate. But moving on, I'm just I keep skipping it. Here we go, rise. And also, he's invested in Robinhood, which we probably again see the tokenization of stocks. So a company like Rise, as soon as I can load it here, is going to allow companies to do their payroll in crypto. Fastest, most flexible way to hire, onboard, and pay globally distributed teams in cash or crypto all from one place. So money's coming into Draper multifold from crypto investments he's invested in the infrastructure he's invested in the cryptocurrencies themselves and he's invested in companies that will <laughs> control the payment or i.e the banks the future banks of crypto right so as well as like uh yeah so so I think that's clear. Okay, no division. Uh, tell people. Okay, yep, yep. No division. We we got that one. Okay, is this frozen or something? Hold on, guys. Trying to check my comments here, but it seems to be frozen. It's freezing on me. Let me see what I can do here.
My apologies, guys. It froze on me a hot second there. I think we're back, though. Okay, let's get back to where we were. Okay, there we go. Black Roo, uh, I know you got a lot going on. Would you check out AMP? Uh, what's up, uh, Miklo? Um, AMP's another one. Again, we, show, we showed the connection between Gemini and Draper here. Um, so you got Gemini and Draper. And uh, AMP is a payment crypto used on um, Gemini um, and their Flexa network. I have a little bit of AMP. So AMP, I think last bull run, it went up to like 14 cents. Right now, it's probably under a cent right now. Be a great time to get back in if you were. Pulling it up now, y'all. It's coming, coming along slowly, but it's coming. While that's loading, I'll keep going here. Wow, crypto down because, because of wars. Danny TV, thanks to you, bro. Appreciate it. Uh, boom, learned so much from uh, GLC and you. Uh, and my uh, start dumper. Diving in on Gary versus Coinbase. That's how uh, I found uh, Kate. Okay, got you. Got you. I'm buying. I feel like a kid in a candy store. Screen black. Why are you root? I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I'm finally back. Uh, let's go ahead and see. We, we're almost here. Oh, okay. Wow. A lot of people on Twitter. Uh, 63 or 64 on Black Root. 50 on a uh, gentleman of crypto. Um, seems like Elon is really pushing the crypto content. I appreciate him for that. And please go over to X if you guys haven't already at Black Rue. I'm trying to get monetized on there. So um, if you can, uh, give me a follow over there on X. It's at Black Rue. Everything is beeping. Everything's down, of course. But a nice, nice um, time if you want it to get into certain tokens. AMP, honestly, would probably be a good one, probably too. Um, Winklevoss Twins, Gemini, Payment System. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whew. Amp. Okay, yeah. And you can see here it's oversold. It's on the day. Uh, it just touched down to that oversold point. Like, everything's beeping, y'all. I'm sorry. Everything's going to just beep here. Oh, man. Okay. Let me try to change some of these alerts. Stronghold down the 60. Between AMP and Stronghold, uh, you know, I'd probably buy more Strongholds, but uh, definitely AMP, too.
Did it get that I just edited it? Okay. I think it did. So, yeah, I mean, AMP, AMP is great at this price. If you wanted to get back in under a cent, like now is the time. Now is the time. Um, probably other, other coins too, like reserve rights. Um, if you want to get in, it, it's the time now. Yeah, so everything is probably going to look generally like this. Where, um, so if you guys aren't familiar with RSI, the biggest thing to know about RSI is if we can move this tool here, when you get down to this point where my arrow is, that is called oversold. Um, it's when things have gotten sold so much that um, it has to kind of bounce back, okay? Um, and we've reached that oversold point. What you'll notice here is, and this is on a day chart, you can see this at any different time frame, um, but we're just going to focus on the day chart right now. Um, so when a point with which something gets oversold, generally, that's when people say, I'm going to come in and buy. And they're going to buy all the way up until it is overbought. And then that's when the cycle comes back down the other way. Okay. So you can see here, you can see here that cycle. Now, um, where you utilize your time frames at. So let's say we go all the way down to an hour. You can see at different points in this day, it kind of never. Since we've been kind of heading down for the last two days on this chart, which is like the regular RSI, there's like a stochastic RSI, which is kind of a little different. But on a regular um, RSI, it never touched overbought. Never did. So, and of course, you can throw in things like the... Um, but this is like this is like charting type of stuff, though. You can throw in things like remember how we told you if the um, the fifty EMA, which is the the solid blue line, the darker blue line, if the fifty crosses the two hundred, that's called the golden cross. Well, on on the other hand, if the if the fifty, if the okay, hold on, let's let's let's. Let's go back to the day chart so I can show you correctly. So, okay, so at the 50 crosses the 200 here, that's a bullish sign, okay? So on the 200, once or on the 50, which is the blue line, if the 50 crosses the 200, which is the red line, that's a bullish sign. So things went bullish here sometime in January and continued to stay bullish. Um. And at, at this moment, things are coming down towards the red line. But <laughs> that this is this is why you use RSI for this. But going, I, I'm sorry, this is gonna get this is gonna get a little confusing because we're going into different time frames. If we go all the way down to an hour, you can see that for quite a long time, like I guess. Since, I guess, even April, I guess there, you can say things kind of went bearish because the 200 actually crossed over the 50. So for, for, for this amount of time, things have been, I guess, you can say bearish for uh, AMP since the... 4th of April, okay, or even go back to the 1st of April. So this is why it's good to look at different time time frames because in the day chart, you don't see it. You wouldn't see it. 
but going down to things like the eight hour, you can actually kind of see it a little bit, at least with the with the um, eight and fifty EMA. But but this is this is charting stuff. I don't know how many people even care about charting stuff like that. Um, it, it's it's hard talking about charting stuff because it depends on what type of time frame you're looking at. Um, generally, I only look at the daytime chart because I'm hodling. I'm holding for long term. I'm not. I'm not trying to deal with daytime fluctuations. But if you were dealing with daytime fluctuations, then you would probably go down to the hour chart and stuff like that. But for me, I'm 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 holding for long term, so I'm really only looking at the daytime chart. So, um, yeah, if you guys want a show where I I specifically um, gather my thoughts and like prepare a charting type of thing for you, I could do that. Um, but I do have like a couple shows, like if you look at my playlist where I talk about beginner charting type of tips. Um, so you can take a look at that there, but, but generally if you're a person that's hodling, you're only going to really look, uh, or like you're a really kind of like a long-term investor. You're really only looking at the day chart, um, and maybe the week chart. But uh, somebody that's more like kind of swing trading to like day trading, they're going to look at the hour and like lower than the hour. But I, I don't do that. I mean, you could do it with crypto, but I, I just don't. Hey, Ru, uh, who pays more to monetize? X YouTuber TikTok. Well, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of people say that, um, I think YouTube is the best one as far as monetization goes, but even YouTube is lower than most people think. Uh, so they try to go to things like Rockfin or, um, Rumble, um, especially since Rockfin and Rumble don't censor you as much. Um, but you know, I had to, t I had to really talk to someone who is monetized on X because I don't necessarily know what those checks look like. Whereas on YouTube, I know different people like Anton Daniels, shout out to his channel. I know for Anton Daniels, Patreon, he actually shows you how much he makes as far as his YouTube checks go. And that's pretty cool. And I know if, uh, Spencer Cornelius showed his, his once before, but uh, check out Anton Daniels' Patreon if you really want to know, like, what you can make with YouTube. I know he has, like, two different channels that are over 250K um, subscribers. And um, <clears throat> I like what he does with his content because he mixes in, like, popular black pop culture stuff along with um, along with um, the, the financial stuff. Because, you know, financial stuff... Um, other than us, us diehards here, right? It's really hard to get people to look at financial stuff. So you kind of have to mix in the popular culture stuff with it too, unfortunately. But you know, um, you know, I don't see myself doing it anytime soon. I'll probably, if I wanted to do something like that, I would make it a separate channel for specifically for pop culture stuff. And I, I might do that. I might do that one day. Why is uh, Gray so high on ETH? Uh, possibly because everybody's freaking out that everything's going down and they're trying to get in there and sell. That's that's probably why I channel name. Pe people are freaking out. I, I wouldn't freak. I would freak. I would just I would just adjust my portfolio. Not financial advice. I would just per adjust my portfolio into things that I'm really really confident on. Um, this 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 gives you the opportunity to do that. Uh, so, if I'm really confident on Swift, I can buy more Swift. But if you're if you're good, you're good. But I know there's always things that people are looking at in their portfolio. Like, okay, I wish I had more of that. I wish I had more of this. Well, now's the time. 
Like for instance, uh, Ando Finance, we talked about them a lot today, right? Um, Ando Finance was towards like the dollar area, right? Um, but now, now you can get it for 66 cents. Whereas before, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I could have sworn this was at a dollar. Oh, I'm on a, I'm on a uh, hour chart as opposed to a day. Okay, so there we go. So literally, this is like over a dollar at some point. You're getting it like half off. Woo. Yeah, so you're getting it half off here. So, yeah. Thanks. No problem. No problem. I'm glad I took my profits on um, reserve rights. Got you. Yeah. 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 I took I took some profits on the, that one too, uh, Drake Gullo ones. Still kind of high on them though too because uh, Peter Thiel is related there. So I still got some. Um, is Uniswap doomed with the F SEC? Uh, no. I, I don't. When when it when did Uniswap now get in pro trouble with the SEC? I know crypto is so many, right? Uh, Uniswap. I don't know why Uniswap would ever ever be in the trouble with the SEC again. Stan, to me, that is more noise. It is more noise because remember we showed you before. Um, how Stellar is on the CFTC's board, right? Guess who's on there with them? Uniswap. So this was in January 20th, 2023. Stellar joins the CFTC's Global Market Advisories Committee as one of four crypto organizations. So this is from Cointelegraph. This is not just from some random site. Um, so Stellar has become the newest member of the United States Commodity Futures and Trading Commission. Guess who's on there with them? HSBC, Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, but also um, CoinFund and Uniswap. So I don't see why Uniswap would ever be in trouble with the SEC. That that seems like more noise to me. I, 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 I honestly would, I do not understand that. I don't know why they would be in trouble. And I think we just have to stop letting these, um, these mainstream narratives uh, worry us. We, we just, we, we got to let them go. Yeah, I, I, this is, <laughs> I, I would not worry about this. Um, you know, it, it's up to you guys. If you, if you got, I'm not worried about this. If you guys want to worry about things like this, go right ahead. But I'm, I mean, I, sh I just showed you that information there, right? With the CFTC. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why you guys let these 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 narratives continue to bo bother you. Um, I don't know. It's like maybe you don't believe me or or what, but I don't know how you're not believing me because I show you I show you the news article like right in front of your face here. I show you guys these news articles, so I don't understand. Um, why you still let these mainstream media uh, narratives bother you or worry you? Um, they're just fluff. They're just fluff. Um, how else do they prevent the normal person from investing into things like Uniswap, into things that um, we know have backing, like actual real backing from uh, the government? Like you can, you can effectively almost think of BlackRock as a government because of 
their success record in getting things approved, their connections with uh, the World Economic Forum, you can effectively kind of think of BlackRock as the government. So if Uniswap is on a on a, a <laughs> on a regulatory committee with BlackRock and it's the US Commodities Futures Trading Commission. I, I just don't see any reason why they would need to worry about the SEC. I, I, I see the article here that you're talking about. I, I see these. I see these things, but honestly, I think it's just noise. It's just distraction. It's just oh my gosh, do I need to sell my Uniswap here now? No, no. Um, and then they'll continue to do things like this to try to shake you out of good companies. Yeah. How long do you think uh, this market low will last? Not long. I don't think it'll last that long at all. Um, let's uh, let's get into this. What's up, Maximus Crypto? I see my guy Max in the comments there. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to Maximus Crypto. Probably see me in those Maximus Crypto streets uh, next week. Definitely have to plan a uh, a collab with Max. We're gonna we're gonna have those like seriously be bi weekly, um, guys. So definitely be on the lookout for those. Um, okay, so yeah, market low. How long I think it'll last? I don't think it'll last long. Um, generally, one of the things I should show you guys um, is it, it seems to me. Oh, I hate this mouse, bro. Okay, one second. Okay, there we are. Okay, so with the moon phases kind of turned on, you could see that when we have the, like the new moon, which is like no moon at all, um, this tends to be when we have like the little dips, when we have this like kind of new moon action, right? You can see it again here. Well, we're at a new moon now. So we got a little dip going, but uh, generally when we get to the full moon, it kind of pulls back up. So where are we at now? New moon, and then we got the little waner coming, and then we'll have a full moon, and it'll probably pull back up. So look up moon cycles, and um, you know, see when the waning moon is, and see when the full moon is. And the full moon will probably be the the you know will probably head right back up after the full moon um that that would be my thought this is not financial advice this is just my thoughts okay because um the having is what like two or three days from now right so this is just a little scare they're putting in your hearts um before the having like oh oh maybe the having will will send us down to like like 20k. Oh my god. Maybe the having will scare us. And 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 in this voice guys, I'm not I'm trying I'm not I'm not trying to mock anybody or mock anyone's fear. I I'm really not. I I'm just trying to I'm trying to give you guys an idea of what what the articles are designed to do. It's designed to to, to give you like the frantic type of feeling. These these things are designed for that. Um, but like I said to you guys before, um, if you think like I think, and I, I laid out, we got the Bitcoin, um, 
Bitcoin ETFs coming for Asia, right? We got the Ethereum ETF coming. We got um, the the central banks investing in um, crypto in 2025. If you know that's what's coming, right? Then Wusa a little bit, right? It's a red day. A red day is a great day to buy. If it goes even further, buy even more, right? Not financial advice, but like, okay, it's a red day. So maybe it goes a little bit more red towards this waning moon that hasn't happened yet. Or at least by this this thing, I don't think this waning moon has happened yet. And it will keep pulling back down all the way until the new, until the actual full moon. So maybe you wait until a little bit like after the waning moon to buy some, but hell, heck, I I tend to buy just okay, it's low today. Let me buy some today. And in a couple of days before the moon, new moon, before the full moon, if it's still low, I'm gonna buy some more, right? Um, but all of us, or at least I'm expecting over 100 k Bitcoin for sure. So, hey, let me just take advantage and buy for the red day. Right? Um, with Uniswap, I think it's more for FUD, just like Solana. 100%. 100%. Uh, buy more Uniswap. For sure. For sure. I think they it's just these guys trying to give you uh, more fear, uh, uncertainty, and doubt, more FUD, and you know, be confident in your research, be confident in all the things that you've seen, and be like, ah, oh, man, no, no, okay, SEC, you're you're doing a good job of playing the, you know, the the bad cop out of the good cop bad cop deal, but uh, I know my research, I know. What I've seen about Uniswap, and uh, yeah, so I'm good. Heck, if 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 even it goes down, maybe I'll buy more Uniswap. But you know, I'm not gonna let you guys make me fear. I I've seen like, look at all the different connections here we made to billionaires, right? And in the cryptocurrency market, you re really think like we just connected Draper and all of them to to Ethereum and Polygon, and you think. They're gonna take down Uniswap, which which is one of their best uh, decentralized uh, platforms. No, <laughs> no, they're not. They're not gonna do that. <laughs> no, despite whatever the hell they show you in the news, it's not happening. Um, not financial advice. <laughs> um. I.E. and salute to Natwali. Uh, Natwali, you're from the uh, Max Crypt Crypto uh, community. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you for coming through. Give a salute to the brother Max in here. Okay, watch uh, when Uniswap 4 comes out. 99% of the sailings on gas fees. No joke. Go look. I buy the fear, not financial advice. Let's go, Max, dropping some, some, some uh, gem of information on us right there. Exactly, man. Yeah, yeah. Buy the fear. That's that's exactly it, right there. It's like it's like the inverse Kramer, right, guys? For those of you who invest in the stock market, everybody says, right? Okay, just do the opposite of what Kramer says. Why? Because Kramer is the media, uh, he's the uh, propagandist. He's their, their guy. So people have learned over time that if you do the opposite of what he says, yeah, you're making money. <laughs> it's it's crazy, bro, but that that's that's how it works. That is how it works. That is how it works. Um, look up new uh, Brix tweet. Ooh, new Brix tweet. That'll, that'll be something to exit on. Uh, I ran. Ooh, okay. Let's let's look at that new big tweet. 
Rocky's gonna go down more. Okay, gotcha. So war fears, and this is this 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 might have been the whole thing that people were waiting about with the eclipse, right? And now they'll they'll blame it on the war. Breaking. Iran has officially launches. Okay, I'll, I'll, Iran officially launches attack on Israel using dozens of drones. Okay. Yep. So they're they're trying to make it into the war type of deal. And 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 forgive me, um, I'm not trying to be a callous about people losing lives in the war, but you know these. You know, they can say anything they want to try to bring the market down, right? And, you know, sad, sad to see. Sad to see. Um, Israel um, attacks Iran, NBC, um, Xing 16 people, including officials. Um, yep. So, sad thing to see. Sad thing to see. It really is. Um, really is sad to see. Um, cause you know, as much as I do believe a lot of this is centrally controlled, right. And that there are no sides that doesn't mean that lives aren't still lost. Right. So, you know, that, that part, I don't like that part. I really don't like that part. My prayers go out to the families. Of people who who have lost lives, um, yeah. So it's a part of me that thinks that you know the people in charge do not think of us normal people as like humans. You know what I mean? Um, there's a part of me that thinks that it really does. Um, but yeah, shot um, prayers for the people who have lost lives out here. Um, Oh no, that wasn't me who said by the fear. That was Max. That was Max. That was his. It makes me think of uh, coming to America. That that is not mine. Is that is Nietzsche's? That is Nietzsche's. <laughs> oh man! Shout out to uh, Eddie Murphy on that one. <laughs> aha, aha! Taste the soup. Taste the soup. Where's the spoon? Aha, aha. <laughs> A uh, little little brevity there in uh, what's going on here. Um, little brevity and in, in, in what's going on here. Um, please share your uh, unilateral control theory. That's deep. Um, well, it's just the more and more that we look at things, um, like we saw kind of a, Draper sharing that, um, you know, his a lot of his investments are in China, and we saw, you know, Larry Fink say, um, "We're underinvested in China." Um, it seems like there are "quote unquote" hidden hands behind um, everything, right? Um, I try not to get into too much of this nowadays. For the sake of my views, but um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's it. But of course, maybe this means I need to put more time into um, my Rockfin channel and another channel for stuff like this. Love that movie; it's one of my favorites. Yeah, Coming to America is a classic, bro. Classic. And hey, uh, if anybody can drop in the uh, uh, chat what 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 wallet they use for BSV um because I wanna I wanna uh I want a, a wallet for BSV stuff so many good swell sales swift C uh SHX Lusco Quant XLM H bar hell even XRP <laughs> little little alpha there from Max appreciate that um 
And, and thank you, G. Thank you for letting us know about that. Um, I think this is the reason they're using for uh, for the war for for um, for crypto to go down right now. We did just have the eclipse, kind of um, an esoteric perfect time to start some trouble here. Um, so, so that's where we're at. Awesome quote, Max. Um, but yeah, guys, two hours and thirty. Uh, two minutes, not quite as long as a uh, as a Maximus Crypto like seven hour stream, but uh, your man has to go get some food here because I am hungry out here. Uh, when Alec Baldwin impersonated Trump, he would say <laughs> "Gaina" instead of "China." <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Uh, McDonald's has the big Mick, but the SEC has the big. <laughs> Nice one, Scott. Nice one. McDonald's has the Big Mick. The Big Mac. But we have the Big Mick. Huh? Huh? Shout out to uh, John Amos on that one. That was that was a classic. <laughs> like, oh, the dude. Dude, that, that whole that whole show, bro. That whole whole coming to America. Like, like the whole, like, um, the part where my man's like, she's your queen to be and he like goes into the whole song and then he finishes the song and my man just sits there with the deadpan face like whatever bro <laughs> I'm, I'm just here singing i don't really give a damn about what's going on <laughs> oh man oh like okay gotcha like <laughs> <laughs> like like the like the female yeah 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 um <laughs> i'm not doing any seven hour streams again no no bro yeah that's bad for your health bro it's not good for your health like there's dedication and then there's just like dead <laughs> you, you don't want the point where dedication reaches into dead bro we, we don't we don't want that we don't want that <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Oh man, you guys got me laughing here. Uh, am I missing something with XDC? Haven't seen any tech uh, shifting. Um, check out Red Pill Professional. He's been doing a lot of great um, XDC videos lately, especially getting into their ecosystem and stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely check them out. Uh, XDC is little talked about, but it's definitely just as important when it comes to trade finance and tokenization, uh, -huh. tokenization of trade finance. So yeah, they're, they're still important for that. Like that whole, that whole, um, we didn't even cover, like when you get into the stellar portion, you're basically getting into the whole ISO, uh, two, zero, zero, two, two. 20022 portion of tokenization. All of that's related to Stellar and all those different people who are related to Stellar. Um, like the, the and the World Economic Forum, that's a whole even another com conversation. So I was able to chop up like 10 <laughs> CDOs. Nice. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. It's all about uh it's all about the profit and you know you should you should uh when you're when you're getting uh us all this great information edge wallet for uh bsv and maybe safe file thanks cryptwork she's like the resident wallet person for both uh, the black crew investing uh side of things and the simon family investment sides of things uh we appreciate cryptwork around here um 150 watching you, Rue. I see that. Nice. YouTube, obviously. X, where do us do you stream from? Just just those, I think. Okay. So my show, Black uh, Gentleman of Crypto. So yeah. So 52 from Gentleman of Crypto, uh, 68 from Black Room Investing or from Black Room um, Twitter, uh, 16 on Gentleman of Crypto and 15 on Black Room. Uh, AI and uh, Gaming Crypto. Is a call for 2024, but what about the oracles? Yeah, there's some oracles out there that people are sleeping on for sure. Um, there definitely are some oracles out there people are sleeping on. Um, 
AI, um, gaming, gaming seems like a little bit of a distraction to me. Gaming, gaming did not nearly as go go up as much as some other things. Um, but this is what this is what all the influencers push because kind of Alex Becker pushes gaming and all of that. But there there were some way bigger narratives than gaming, like payment, payment cryptos, like smoked gaming in my in my mind. Um, especially if you look at uh, SHX, SHX smoked Miria and any of those things. It smoked them, like smoked them. Uh, for streams simultaneously, nice way to bring it all to the communities right on. Uh, Wallet is not for BSV. Google said it, but maybe I don't see it. Okay, gotcha. No problem. I'll look at our safe pal. Uh, all right, cool, guys. About to go grab some food. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one, guys. Peace.